So today, topic is liver, advanced liver. Does somebody of you have joined the morning session? If, okay. So today is the advanced, so we start with the basic. But I would like to also show you the latest equipment, with the software version, which give you more diagnostic confidence. How much experience do you have regarding contrast hand ultrasound? Who is the expert? Who do more than 50 examination? No. Okay, then we have to start from the basic. No problem. We optimize it, I'm sure, after this one hour of lecture, you are the expert. What we do, I give you a general lecture, how it looks like. And if we have enough time, I will show you on the volunteer, he has got a lesion, how to start the examination at the volunteer and on the system. And I have got a similar case on the system which will exactly display this lesion also with contrast. So regarding the topic, around about 5% of the whole population in the world has got a liver lesion. The most time it's a benign liver lesion, that's good. Unfortunately, at the day of diagnostic of cancer, around about 50% of the patient has got liver meds. Now, you would like to offer treatment, therefore you have to know, is it a benign lesion, because 5% has got a benign lesion, or is it already liver meds? If you don't know this, you could not offer the best treatment. That's the reason why we use often contrast and ultrasound to rule out what kind of lesion this might be. You see there's ultrasound equipment, this is I think at least 50 years old. Even it's not a Philips equipment, probably you have no success if you inject contrast. Because we need a special software, it's like a Windows PC. So we have to upgrade the system to contrast performance. This option you have either buy it when you bought the system or you have to check whether your existing system could be upgraded. But without this software, it makes no sense to start with contrast. You see the bubble has got a size like a single red blood cell, very tiny, a single bubble, very, very small. The first generation was filled with air. Nowadays, all the bubbles which are available are gas inside. All bubbles have got a shell, either it's a palmitine shell, albumin shell, or a peat shell. And the big difference in comparison to CT or MRI is that we're speaking about a blood pool contrast agent. This means the contrast agent will stay in the vessel, it will never leave the vessel except you have got an active bleeding. CT or MRI, there will be diffusion of contrast in the throwing tissue. This means, for example, a cyst could be enhanced in the CT or MRI. It will never enhance an ultrasound because we will not see bubbles inside, except we just have an active hemorrhage cyst. How is it working? You see a single bubble there, so you see the wave from the probe compressed and decompressed the bubble. And the bubble is working like a backscatter, so we get more signal. We got up to 30 dB of more signal, that's a huge amount of signal for ultrasound. But you need the special software, otherwise you don't see the oscillation of a single bubble. If you will try it without this software, this bubble will immediately destroy immediately and you have no benefit. The examination time for a single liver examination is up to five minutes. And if you use it without software, immediately destroy it. So no benefit. The good news is these contrast agents have no influence on kidney or thyroid function. So we could start directly. But of course the patient has to give an informed consent that they agree that you are allowed to inject contrast. The amount of contrast is very low, it's between 1.2 to 1.6 or 7 cc. This means in one while we have got 5 cc of contrast, so you can do three examinations with one wire. You could also repeat the examination as often as you like in a single patient. But if you take the bottle to the next one, take a new syringe, that's important. 
No? And the cost you have to spend, a single rail costs around about 85 euro. And if you do four examination, that's around about 21 euro for a single examination. Much cheaper in comparison to the MI, it's around about 180 euro for a single liver examination. When we speak about liver lesion, we have got three phases. The arterial phase, portovenous phase, and late phase. You have to look at these three phases, and then you have to describe in the report what happens in the three phases. Every liver lesion has got different behavior in these three phases. That's the reason why we can make a clear diagnosis what kind of lesion we have seen before. In this talk, I will focus on a couple of benign lesions, like hemangioma, FNH, cyst, abscess, and also malignant liver lesion like liver meds, HCC. Additional, I will show you the conventional grayscale color Doppler contrast, and I would like to show you also the super res option that you get 200% more of spatial resolution, which is available now. Starting with the benign liver lesion. Hemangioma. How does a hemangioma behave? So we have got these three phases, arterial phase, portovenous phase, late phase. There is a perinodule enhancement in the arterial phase. That means contrast arrives in the peripheral and these nodules are growing and growing. This is the portovenous phase and late phase. Under optimal scanning position, the lesion has got a complete fill with contrast. Sometimes hemangioma could have thrombotic changes inside, so they are not complete filled, but they still have the perinodial enhancement. So we see our lesions there, typical behavior for hemangioma in the grayscale. So we start with contrast, you see this perinodial enhancement, these nodules, and these nodules are growing and growing, and over time, it's completely filled. The amount of contrast in hemangioma is very low. That's the reason why don't make a mistake and scan five minutes out of break. My recommendation will be scan 20 seconds, don't remove the probe, let the probe there, just push the freeze button. Because ultrasound waves mean also stress for the bubbles. And we, want not, we didn't want like to destroy bubbles too much. That's the reason why we make a break after 20 seconds, wait a half minute, scan for 5 to 10 seconds, freeze it again, and we do it up to 5 minutes. So you have got a long lifetime for the bubbles. If you scan without a break, sometimes it could be difficult, and sometimes you could make also the wrong diagnosis, because every scanning means destroying bubbles. And if a lesion has an uptake and afterwards destroy bubbles, it looks like a washout. Then a benign lesion could be, look like a malignant lesion. But of course it was your mistake because there was too much stress on the bubble. <coughs> Do you agree in the grayscale that it might be a hemangioma? It's hypergenic. It's capsula. So we start with the color Doppler and micro flow imaging, a special part where we could detect very slow flow. We don't see major vessels inside, so it will be less. So we also expect if there are no vessels in color Doppler or micro flow, so the amount will be low of contrast. Then we go to the contrast. Contrast arrived, and you see very, very nice. Look at here. Parry nodule enhancement. These nodules there, or here are nodules, or there are nodules. And you see over time, these nodules are growing, so they get bigger and bigger. So we go now to the portovenous phase, and I told you there's an advanced technique that caused, it could summarize the examination time in a very short clip and give you the best idea. So we see this lesion, very nice, with this kind of, look here, parry nodule enhancement, you see this? So this clip summarizes the complete examination time in a very short clip with less artifacts. Look at the clip on the top.
there is a movement. You see this? Is there any movement here? So the system is clever enough to stay the image still, motion compensation mode. Improve your confidence for diagnostics. On the button, you see a MIP reconstruction over time. And here you see the time of arrival. Everything is, is red means an early uptake. Everything is yellow, less, a little longer. And blue means very late. And here you see very nice, this peri neural enhancement, you see early arrival. So we know exactly from the first clip, it looks like a hemangioma. And it was a hemangioma. What about this lesion? This lesion is roughly about maybe six to seven centimeter. Will be your first diagnosis in grayscale that this might be a hemangioma or something else. Do you feel conf confidence to say hemangioma? Or what will be your normal pathway? If you do your examination at home and you find this lesion by yourself, what do you do? Pun? MRI. Okay, so you are willing to spend $160 or euro for contrast agent. You know that sometimes in our university we have got five MRIs, but the waiting time until you get a slot is two weeks. So the patient is in the most time not so comfortable to wait two weeks until he gets a diagnosis. Will it not be a good solution to say, I can tell you in two minutes what kind of lesion it is. So, first of all, we look for color Doppler and microflow imaging. We see here even also very less vessels inside. Okay. Now, we use contrast. And after five seconds, I know this is a perinodial enhancement. You see the perinodial uptake? And over time, you see more and more contrast arrived. So, the complete examination time it's maybe three minutes, but you do it immediately. So, again, you see more and more contrast arrived. So these perinodules are growing and growing. This is after two and a half minutes. So this is the portal venous phase. One minute thirty, two and a half minutes. So we know big hemangioma with some thrombotic changes. Diagnosis cost you 20 euro. Immediately, no need for biopsy. And the confidence is on the same value like MRI with liver specific contrast agent if the lesion is stable in the image. If the lesion is very, very deep, deep means more than 16, 7 centimeters, it's more difficult. If the lesion is less than a centimeter, also difficult. This will be not your target lesion for the beginner. The best lesion for a beginner with a lesion in the in the depth between 6 to 10 centimeters because then you get a better solution for contrast. If you get used to this setting, then you can start to think about smaller lesion or deeper lesion or superficial lesion. Now, I give you the whole information in a short clip. Look here. What happens? Look at the image on the button. You see all the information you need. You see peri neural enhancement. You see time of arrival. Red means strong and early. So you know exactly this is a hemangioma with thrombotic changes inside. Okay, we make it more difficult. The header told you hemangioma. But maybe I would like to confuse you. Is this a typical appearance of a hemangioma? No. Most of us will think everything else but except a hemangioma. Because when, we, because when we think about hemangioma, we think about a very bright liver lesion. And this is not bright, it's dark. We see some peripheral vessels. Inside, we could not see major vessels. Okay, now we start with contrast. What you see, strong peri your enhancement and over time you see more and more contrast arrived. You see 
more and more contrast arrived. And after two and a half minutes, nearly the complete lesion is filled with contrast. So even if it looks strange in the grayscale, the pattern and the contrast is exactly the same between a normal hemangioma and an atypical hemangioma. Again, if you would like to get the image in a nice story with two clips with a high quality, look at the early phase and the late phase. You see more and more contrast show in the peripheral and you see over time more and more contrast arrived here. Everything which have got an uptake and still have contrast after two minutes is a benign lesion. So we can say very easy hemangioma. F and H have got a little bit different behavior. They have got a strong uptake in the arterial phase. They are still hyper enhancing in the portal venous phase and late phase. So we see our lesion. Sometimes it could be a challenge to find the F and H in the grayscale because often they have the same ehugenity. So if you have a quick scan, good chance to miss it in grayscale. So if we inject contrast, you see from the center to the peripheral, very strong, <coughs> much stronger in comparison to surrounding tissue, and no washout. Very easy story. Will be your diagnosis of an FNH if you see this tiny lesion. Hmm. Maybe not the first diagnosis. By looking at the Caloplar and microflow imaging, we see a couple of strong vessels inside. Also, here look very nice how sensitive this new flow technique is in comparison to conventional grayscale, a Caloplar. So, the next step, we start with contrast. You see very nice from the center to the peripheral, strong uptake. At the moment, it could be nearly everything. But we have to see what's going on in the portal venous phase and late phase. So, we only have seen one third of the story. So, we go to the next step. So, this is after two minutes still hyper-enhancing and after three minutes also still hyper-enhancing. This means also here it's com confirmed that this is a FNH and not a liver mats. What about this huge lesion there? Seven centimeter hypergenic. Of course I tell you, F and H, but did you trust me? Because hemangioma could look like similar. Important is use step by step the technique. Start with grayscale, optimize your grayscale, then go to color or microflow imaging, and then you can go to contrast. Don't make a mistake and do grayscale contrast. Do step by step. Look here. Did you have ever seen a hammer and German with so much vessels inside? No. And if you look for the microflow imaging, you see a very, very strong central vessel inside. Central feeding vessel, F and H. So the next step, we start with contrast. You still see this lesion show a very, very strong uptake. You see, it's much more bright with contrast in comparison to this setting here. And also in the center, you see the central scar. So in the portovenous phase, you still see, still hyper-enhancing. And in the late phase, after three and a half minutes, still hyper-enhancing. There's another seat, just come in front. One of you there, another one here. Yeah. So, you see also here FNH, no need for biopsy or treatment. Now, I'll show you the new technique. Look here, you see this strong uptake and also the time of arrival. It shows you in the center, you see there, 
is red inside. This means the first bubbles show up in the center. This is a central feeding vessel. And if we destroy it and see it later, you still see the refill. Typical behavior, tiny vessels but strong uptake inside FNH. We would just look here in the late phase, still hyper enhancing, typical pattern for an FNH. But you can do it also, conventional color doppler, a uh, grayscale contrast and both new settings, either high resolution or time of arrival in a four chamber uh, view. What about this lesion here? There's also a lesion which looks a little bit strange. Oh, you see this lesion here? This lesion has got a diameter, maybe uh, two centimeter. By looking at Karl Doppler, we already see that there is a strong vessel in the middle of this lesion. This also was confirmed by microflow imaging. Now we start with contrast and also you see very nice this strong uptake from the center to the peripheral and also in the late phase, no washout, also here a hypogenic lesion. What are the key points for FNH I would like to share with you is in the grayscale, FNH could be isoatogenic, most difficult to see, they could hypogenic, dark, or they could be bright. Everything could happen in the FNH. That means it make it difficult. Again, if you look at this summarize of your story, look at this target there. You see the first bubble arrived there. If the clip starts again, you see also here by time of arrival, it's red in the middle of this lesion. Again, I show you. There's the first, you see there's the lesion, red, and also the motion compensation improves the quality of your image. Another lesion, very small. This lesion is around about 1.5 centimeter. The problem is this lesion compresses the gel better. If a lesion compresses something, there might be suspicion of cancer but also the benign lesion could compress something. So, by looking at color Doppler and MVI, we also see there is a strong vessel inside. So we know there might be a good chance that this patient has got an FNH. And you still see, for the beginning, contrast in the middle. And now I start the clip, it's going in all directions. Then we go to the port venous phase, still hyper enhancing. And here we have got a, uh, uh, a summarized of contrast and MFI. You see also here nice the vessels of this tiny FNH. If we summarize the information, you still see strong red uptake. First bubbles show up in the middle of this lesion. or both contrast, conventional contrast, grayscale, uh, super res, and time of arrival, which summarize the whole examination in a short clip. Liver cysts are very easy. Why? Because think about we have got a blood pool contrast agent. This means they will have no contrast uptake inside. So we see our liver cyst. So we see the typical behavior in the grayscale. And if we eject contrast, it's still black. That is very, very easy. Is this a liver cyst? I mean, we see the gal better here. But there is a cystic lesion. We see also the posterior enhancement. By looking at MFI, we could not see any vessels inside. So in the next step, we start with contrast. There's our lesion in the grayscale. 
There's our lesion and the contrast you see is completely dark inside. This means it confirms the diagnosis of a liver cyst. Normally there is no need to use contrast for liver cysts because so, liver cysts are so clearly seen in grayscale. But in order to give the complete education package, I decided also to show you the contrast, but it will no need. Again, also on the portovenous phase and late phase, no change, but of course we don't expect any change if we have got a liver cyst. Now I get a little bit more strange lesion. You see, just adjacent to the gallbladder, there's a cystic lesion, but something is inside. You see this nodule? And also by Keller Doppler or MFI, I was not able to see any vascularization inside. Now the question is, is our Keller Doppler or MFI not good enough? to show vascularization, or is there no vascularization? If you like to prove it, very easy. You still see there is the nodule, there it is, and you see it's dark. So there seems to be a hemorrhage cyst with some clot inside. Also here, no need for treatment. And even if you look at the portal venous phase, you see very nice. This was an unclear lesion we detected in the cyst. But here you see it's not alive. It is just a complex liver cyst. Also here, if you summarize all the information over time, which is the most sensitive part, it confirms it's completely dark. Again, we see there was our lesion, we see it in the grayscale, but here no uptake. Now we make it more difficult. Is this a liver cyst or a tumor? Of course, it will fit better to the topic when I just write the liver cyst, it should be liver cyst instead of a tumor, but if you have to make a decision, will it be your first diagnosis of liver cyst? If you think about renal cancer, for example, RCC, they look exactly the same. So maybe it's a kind of cancer or complex cyst. So we start with contrast. You will still see there's a couple of other cysts also. But you see this cystic lesion is completely dark, no uptake inside. If you go now to the portovenous phase, you still see completely dark, and even the late phase, completely dark, no uptake inside. Fine, it's just a liver cyst, a hemorrhage liver cyst. But if you look at the grayscale, probably you get confused. Pro most of us probably will recommend a biopsy if they have no contrast or CT or MRI. Even here, look at this high resolution contrast setting and also time of arrival, no uptake inside. Again, you have both grayscale, contrast conventional, super rest contrast, time of arrival, or for options, confirm your diagnosis. This is just a hemorrhage test, no need. Abscess is very easy. Abscess is an inflammatory part. This means you have got a strong uptake in the peripheral, rim enhancement. So we see this is our abscess. So if we inject contrast, you see strong uptake up to capsular and no wash out. Is this an abscess or not? For those of you who have got experience, who will say, oh, look here, I see some air inside. Seems to be an abscess here. You see the complete extent of this lesion. Now we start with contrast. 
this is not contrast, it's artifacts from the air. Room enhancement. And what will be the best treatment now for this abscess? What will you do? What do you recommend for your patient? Wait and see or antibiotic or drainage? I think this abscess has got a diameter around about six centimeter. Six to three. That is too big for antibiotics. You can do additional antibiotics, but best treatment will be drainage and antibiotics. Again, you'll still see this hyper enhancing rim inside artifacts, so it confirms that this is an abscess. Again, air and super res confirms the diagnosis of an abscess. What I've done here is now you can also use contrast to push it over the drainage inside. You see very nice this is the drainage here in the abscess. And you see more and more contrast arrived. And you have to answer three questions when they send you a patient with a drainage. Is the drainage on the proper position in the abscess? What's your opinion, yes or no? Looks not too bad, oh? Okay. Is there any dislocation of the drainage? If there will be a dislocation of the drainage, you will have got contrast here. Did you see contrast here? No. So no dislocation. And the third question you have to answer, does this abscess have contact to the bile duct system inside? So did you see any bubbles which move from here in this direction? No. So all questions the intern doctor need could be answered very, very easy in less than a minute. Do me one favorite. If you look at this drainage, don't use the same amount of contrast which we use it for IV. Use only one or two drops of contrast in 20 cc of saline. That's complete enough. Don't inject 1.5 cc of contrast in the drainage. That's much too much. Again, you see, drainage is in the proper position, no dislocation and no connection to the bile duct system inside. What about this lesion? Look very strange, huh? Do you feel comfortable with this lesion? The good news is often you can speak with the patient. <coughs> And you ask the patient, what's your problem? They said, oh, I got lost weight since three or four weeks. I feel a bit sick. I got fever. And if you find this lesion, probably you think about, if you summarize all this information, probably an abscess. Of course, sometimes if a patient has got a tumor disease, they could have similar symptoms. Now we would like to know whether it's an abscess or not. By contrast, you see a strong peripheral uptake, rim enhancement. Inside it's completely dark. Over time you still see there is no contrast inside. So this is a big abscess with a diameter around about 5 to 5. This means a lot, around about 50 cc of fluid inside. And in this case, to get the best performance or best outcome for your patient, it's important to place the drainage inside to minimize the size of the abscess and to clean it. Of course, antibiotics will be additionally used. Look here, I summarize the information. You see strong uptake in the peripheral. This rim enhancement here. You see it also is red here. Inside completely dark. And if you combine it with conventional grayscale contrast, MFI, um, super rest and time of arrival, all information is in a high quality for you in a single clip. Are there any questions regarding benign liver lesion? If it's not the case, very good, then we can go on with the malignant liver lesion. So the most common malignant liver lesion is liver mats. According to the primary tumor, they have got a hyper-enhancing, hypo-enhancing, or eye-enhancing in the arterial phase. 
If you go to the portal venous phase or late phase, you see very fast that this lesion has got to wash out in comparison to the rest of the tissue. So we see our liver lesion, strong uptake, but a very fast washout. Fast washout means the most time it's less than 30 or 40 seconds, then it's getting darker. HTC, which is also a malignant liver lesion, have got to wash out much later. The question for you is, did you guess how high is the number of an HTC in a non theotic liver? Or didn't they exist? Because often you think, okay, this is not a theotic liver, it's not an HTC. But 5% of all HTC are in a non theotic liver. But the behavior is the same like in a theotic liver. So, did you see a lesion? Take your time, look carefully. Difficult, huh? Okay. So, we improve it, we use Caldoppler and MFI. When we look very carefully, you see this is atypical in peripheral of the liver because there are too much vessels here in this area. In the next step, we go to the contrast. Moderated uptake. At the beginning, it's not the really eye catcher say they have a lesion. But if you wait a little bit, everybody see it now. Huh? And you see that's 50 seconds after injection, already complete washout. Once the washout, the lesion still stay washout, except you inject a second time contrast. When you see this lesion was a washout, what will be, what will be your next step? We have got another three minutes to look whether the patient suffer from a second or third lesion. So you look whether you find any other areas in the liver which are black or dark. Because it has got a major influence, one or two lesion, in right or left liver lobe or in both lobes, important for the surgeon. Okay, now you are the expert regarding liver maps. Take your time and look carefully at the image and ask yourself how many lesions did you see in this plane? Just a number, roughly a number. Who give me one? Okay, who think about two lesions? What's your favorite number? I haven't seen it. Three, okay. Somebody like to get more than three? Four. Does it mean four and you mean five? Four, okay. So at the moment, the best offer is four liver lesion. Everybody agree? Maybe I have got also the color Doppler. You still stay for, for four lesion or less? Difficult, okay. We will check it. So we check contrast. There's a lesion. Again, there's a lesion, big one. There's a lesion. There was also one. And if you look at this area, here is just cover a little bit. There is a third and fourth lesion. So one, two, three, four, five even here. So a lot of lesion, which was not so clearly seen in the grayscale. But with contrast, very easy to see because there's a big difference in the density between uptake and non-uptake or washout. Also here you see the feeding vessel this is important <coughs> because if you would like to offer treatment, sometimes you could use a taste. You now have to know where is the feeding vessel. In order to place the catheter as a proper vessel, to minimize the blood supply of a tumor. Again, we see this tumor and the feeding vessel and the second mats also on this image. 
Okay, we have seen a lot of hemangioma. Is this the correct place for this image for liver meds or the hemangioma? If you only do grayscale, what would be your best diagnosis at the beginning? Hemangioma, yeah. But if you look for color Doppler or MFI, it seems to be a couple of small vessels inside. Now, hemangioma doesn't have so much vessels inside. So we inject contrast. This lesion has got a moderated uptake, but look at the portal venous phase. Now it's clearly seen. And remember, everything, every lesion which have got an uptake and a wash out later is cancer, malignant liver lesion. Hemangioma will have got a peri enhancement and getting filled with contrast, not a wash out. As you still see, clearly, unfortunately, this patient has got a liver mats in this case. Again, we inject it with contrast. There is a lesion with only a moderated uptake, as we see it here. Again, both images side by side, grayscale, contrast, time of arrival, super res, there's a lesion, and wash out. What about this lesion? Could I say that they're manjoma? Not typical, because you see this kind of halo here, this dark rim. This will not fit in the most time the hemangioma. So indirect scent must be something else. If you look for color Doppler MFI, we also see some vessels inside. Look here, there are some vessels inside. That's normally too much for hemangioma. <coughs> also, you see strong uptake. So look at the timer, because it's getting darker here. Round about less than 30 seconds after injection, this lesion getting already dark. And if you look a little bit later, getting more and more clearly washed out. Unfortunately, this is also liver mats. So we summarize the arterial phase and the late phase. Look, enhancement, and also in the late phase, you see clear washout. If I show you only these two images or these two clips, you could make the story very easy. Uptake, washout, liver mats, unfortunately. Also, if you like to have it with conventional grayscale and contrast setting side by side, same information as the scene here. <coughs> also here, washout later. Now we have also the HCC. Most of HCC are in a cirrhotic liver. They have got a strong uptake, chaotic vessel pattern, and the washout is much later. So sometimes you have to wait up to three or four minutes. That's the reason why you should not destroy all the bubbles before. So we see our HCC, strong uptake, chaotic vessel pattern, and a washout which is very late. There's the washout. Is this an HCC? Did we get indirect sign that this patient maybe suffer from HCC? Yeah. Look at the surface <coughs> of the liver. Does the surface of the liver normally look like this? A little bumpy? No. Look, the patient has got a situs. Look at the tissue. It is not as clean as a normal liver. And then we have got a lesion here. So also here, very high suspicion of uh, HCC. By looking for Caldoppler and MFI, we see a couple of vessels inside. And in the next step, we inject contrast. You see strong uptake, coating vessel pattern, 
you see the Cauchy Wessel pattern. Then we go to the portal venous phase. No washout. Remember, if it will be a liver mats, it will be already dark. But here in this case, we have to wait after three and a half minutes, and then it sl slightly starts to wash out in this area. So we can, can say also here, this is an HTC. And remember, if you're not clear, sure if it's an FNH, because they have also strong vessels, look at these maps. Remember, FNH have tiny vessels, strong uptake, but tiny vessels. But here you see very, very strong cortic vessel pattern. You see everywhere contrast, and not the feeding vessel inside. So also in this case, it's helpful to make a clear differentiation between HTC or an FNH. Because keep in mind, also in a cirrhotic liver, patient could have an F FNH. Again, you see it side by side, time of arrival, which gives the key information. Did you see a lesion? Maybe a tiny lesion. So we optimize it by color Doppler and power Doppler. Difficult to see, but maybe a tiny lesion. There it is. Tiny F, uh, HTC with a diameter less than one centimeter. And of course, the best outcome for a patient is if we could detect this early. And in the later phase, you still see there is the lesion. You see, there is our small HTC. So we are also able to detect very early HTCs by using this technique. So the grayscale difficult, but with contrast clearly seen. So often I will ask, how good is this technique? So if you look for conventional ultrasound, which is a basic, and compare it to contrast, you see a big improvement in the specificity and sensitivity. If you compare it to CT, all the studies since a couple of years show there is no significant difference between CT and contrast ultrasound. So we would like to avoid a radiation dose or CT examination, then of course it's a pretty good option to use this technique. If you think about this high resolution microflow vascular imaging, oh. Then I think it's a kind of multiparametric imaging which help even less experienced doctors to summarize the information in high quality, which make your uh, diagnosis much easier. Yeah. So time of arrival, very helpful because you see where the first bubbles arrived and also keep in mind that there is the kind of a motion artifact, motion com compensation models inside. With my last slide, of course, I would like to welcome you to Munich. We have got a nice course. If you like to need more training cases, just use your mobile phone, scan it, and there are around about 900 training cases for contrast available, every organ, and of course, I'm open for questions regarding this talk. Are there any questions? If there are not a question, then I will just show you how we start the examination, because here you see only the results. And I would like to show you how fast it is to do it in live with the setting. Could somebody connect it? I told you the baseline is grayscale, so we start with the baseline examination there. 
So we look whether we find a liver lesion or not. Yesterday we find a very tiny liver lesion in this patient, which was not known. Did you see it or not? Look at this lesion here. There's the lesion. So then we will go to the contrast setting. We'll just push the contrast to side by side. Optimize a little bit the grayscale. And now our contrast will start. So I will inject contrast. I will push the timer. And this is what happens normally, our pathway, how to handle this. You can do contrast examination also alone. If you do it alone, it's a little bit more difficult. But if somebody helps you, it's much easier. The best way, if somebody helps you, place the needle on the left arm. Because the other doctor or nurse could inject it over the left arm. Because you sit on the right. If you are alone, you can even use the left arm because you have got a time frame up to 12 seconds. What I do, normally I scan with left, inject with right, and then I change it. But this is more difficult, and that's not the best way for a beginner. So if you're a beginner, use do second doctor, second person who helps you to inject, then it's more easy for you. Okay, this will be the end of our talk. Now is the last option to have any questions or I would like to welcome tomorrow because tomorrow we speak about image fusion with also a great option for diagnostic tool. No question? Okay, then thanks for attention and enjoy your conference and I hope it's very fruitful. <laughs>